And good morning, everyone out there. This is Gary Demas. I'm the president of Dave Fox Design Build Remodelers. We are here with you again this morning, just like every Sunday morning at 8 o'clock, right here on 610 WTVN, the big AM powerhouse in Columbus. So we enjoy doing the show. We've been doing it, Jamie, for, is it, are we going on nine years now? Yes, this is our ninth season. Nine years on the Dave Fox Home Remodeling Show. So we have run through a lot of topics over the years, haven't we? We sure have, yeah. I was skimming through them the other day, and we've covered a lot of areas of the home. Yeah. So today we are down in the basement. We are. <laughs> Not literally. We're actually in our recording studio, but yes. we're talking about the basement, right? Yes, yeah. Okay. Kind of diving a little deeper. We we talked uh, about kind of the basement boom we've been seeing and all the mm-hmm. basement projects, and now going a little deeper into what those projects entail. Yeah. And, you know, with me being in this business over 30 years, it's interesting just to see how pro- how the market varies and people are interested in different things at different times. And, you know, basements have been popular, as we mentioned last week, you know, for the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, there's been definitely an uptick in interest in basements. And I'm sure since all the virus stuff, you know, that's even made it more important to have extra living space in the home. Yeah. So <clears throat> kids can get down to the basement or we can build a beautiful wine cellar down there or entertainment center or who knows what. Uh, but it's just a, a current thing that's uh, really important. And I can think back to a few years ago, like if you were having your home appraised, even if you had a really beautiful finished basement, the appraisers would give you very little value for it. But that's changing because of the way people are using their homes. Yeah. And I still think probably my favorite thing about basement projects is the fact that people don't have that kind of resale value at front of mind. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, they feel a little freer in their basement to do exactly what they want. And Mm -hmm. I love that about basements. Yeah. Okay. So to all of our listeners, if you ever want to uh, listen to any of our previously broadcast shows, you can go to DaveFoxRadio.com. And there we've got, gosh, just a whole ton of shows and they've got they're categorized by title i think right or subject matter yeah well they're in there by date so you can kind of scroll through and look at all the subjects and things okay so there's lots of subjects lots of interviewees a lot of interesting shows on all kinds of topics having to do with the home so today our topic is basements and uh, also we invite you to go to our website davefox.com and there we've got tons of pictures of basement projects as well as a lot of other projects. Yeah, we also even have a whole section on our photo gallery dedicated to wine cellars. Yeah, and wine cellars is something we'll talk about today, which is another hot project. Yes. Yeah, and it's it's amazing some of the projects that are some of the wine cellars that we've done over the last few years. Oh, Im- impeccable, In, in yes. all my years in the business, I've never seen such amazing wine cellars as we've done the last few years. Yeah. Okay, so um, what are we going to, I mean, last week we kind of hit the general topics on basements, right, Jamie? Yeah, so now we're going to kind of go to what's beyond that, floors, walls, things like that, what's really in the basements. You know, we talked about some of the obscure things we've been asked to do, whether it be a dance studio, an indoor soccer field, um, you know, various different things that we've had done in basements and been asked to look at doing in basements, but kind of the big things that are almost essential in a basement these days is, you know, that bar, the home theater, the the wine cellar, you know, we're becoming more the standard of a basement. Uh, we mentioned last week, it's very seldom anymore we get a call that's just for flooring, walls, drywall, you know, um, people want to go, go bigger. They yeah. want to have a place to watch the big game and invite their friends down. Yeah, it's really an extended area of your home. And uh, it's kind of like, in some ways, just getting a lot of free space to do with whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's so much extra extra square footage, mm-hmm. especially, I mean, in my home, majority of our square footage is our first floor. And then it goes into the, and that whole square footage is the basement. It's yeah. amazing. It's, you know, for us, more than half our house. And it's just sits it's there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Waiting for us to do something fun. <laughs> okay, well, come on. Let's get you on the schedule here, Jamie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you do, you've got some of your basement finished, right? Yeah, we kind of did. Ours is like a Band-Aid finish, I'd call it. We okay. 
we wanted to do it kind of in steps instead of um, mm-hmm. kind of one lump lump sum. So we've put floors down a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a laminate kind of click connect type yeah. flooring that we put down. Um, and then we laid it with the intent of eventually building walls um, around it. So it's laid with the spacing for the walls there. And then we put up one drywalled wall to separate the storage yeah. and just, we painted the cinder block just with waterproofing paint sure. um, and things like that. And we're going to, I don't know, slowly figure out kind of what we want to utilize the space for. Um, we have the need for an, a guest room or in-law suite of sorts down mm-hmm. there, uh, especially now that all of our bedrooms in our house are occupied. So yeah. we're kind of <laughs> slowly figuring out the plan of what we want to do next, but we have floors. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah. So in my basement, the house that I moved into five and a half years ago. Gosh, has it been that long? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's a large home and it too had a full basement and it's we're up high i think we're the highest house in our neighborhood so we've got some pump system and everything but it has never run yeah i mean we it's so nice being high and dry (laughs) Uh, so i have created several spaces down there one is an exercise room of course basements are great for that yeah and put down like the rubberized floor Mm -hmm. so i've got my exercise equipment in there which i use a lot um and then I've got my music room. So I, you know, I love guitars. I like building guitars. So I've got like 20 guitars in my music room and a keyboard and it's all finished off. Cool. I have some barn wood siding in there and I created a little shop where I built my guitars <clears throat> and I've got a, okay, I'm a pilot, private pilot, and I like to do flight sim stuff. So oh I'm my. a flight sim <laughs> junkie. So I got a little flight sim room. So this is basically the hobby zone. Yes, exactly. <laughs> And then just some, you know, basement area, which everybody needs just some plain old basement area, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Yep. I know even for us um, with, you know, COVID and everything and being at home so much more, we, it used to be kind of a catch-all space, like any extra furniture would just go down into the, that semi-finished area. And we, in this kind of kept calling to have the donation truck come yeah. and haul some stuff out yeah. of there so we could really utilize the space. And now mm-hmm. it's like a secondary kids playroom and we let them do um rollerblades down there and like that yeah. sort of stuff that we would never let them do in the main part of the house and they love it it's been actually really useful we put in some additional can lights so it's at least bright down there mm-hmm. um and that has made a huge difference in the utilization of the space yeah speaking of rollerblades my grandkids all got rollerblades for christmas so it was like snowy outside and they had no place to use them. So I was thinking we have our nice warehouse, right? With a great big circular area. Yeah. So we took them all over to the warehouse and they oh, put their roller blades on and they had such a blast going around oh and around my gosh. in our warehouse. Yeah, that would so be so now fun. Now they've done it for the third time. But the boys, you know, the twins, one of them comes out with these uh, Schluter strips. They well, were sure. for a job with yeah, a name boys. on it. So <laughs> yeah. I said, Jackson, no more of that. You're going to get in trouble. So I put them, uh, gave them to Brett so he could put them where they go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but basements are great spaces and there's so much you can do with them. And that's what we're talking about today, right, Jamie? All the different uh, types of rooms that we've seen built in basements and all the things that people have done really to expand their living area. Uh, just to make their home more comfortable for them and their family and for entertaining guests. Yeah, absolutely. So I think probably a basement bar, I would say, is the most popular thing we get asked to do is putting in that basement bar. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, you know, from there, is it a wet bar? Is it a dry bar? Is it, you know, a bar that's meant for a server? Is it a bar for self-serve? Like what kind of atmosphere do you want to create with that bar? Yeah. Um, So... But yeah, we've seen a lot of interesting bars over the years, contemporary, rustic, industrial, kind of all the different styles. And But I do feel like in a basement, for whatever reason, people tend to go darker. Yeah. Would you say that's true as well? Uh, yeah, I'd say very often. It's, it just creates a more cozy atmosphere, not dark as in dreary, but as in com- comforting, you mm-hmm. know, and just uh, making a nice area to... to uh, Enjoy yourself. So uh, we're going to be taking a break after the break, Jamie. Let's get into more details on those bars. We'll be right back. And welcome back to the Dave Fox Home Remodeling Show. I'm Gary Demas. So Jamie and I are talking about basements. And Jamie, we're going to, in case our listeners missed the first segment, we were just kind of talking general discussion about basements, a lot of different things and different rooms that people put down there. 
So in this segment, let's talk about basement bars because that's a very popular one, as you were mentioning um, right before the break. Yeah, definitely. I think we see a ton of basement bars. Um, I couldn't actually remember the last time we did a basement without a bar, Yeah. <laughs> uh, come to think of it. But yeah, I think, you know, that idea of it being, you know, a man cave, so to speak, is still pretty true. Um, a lot of times it's the place where people go to watch sports and have a drink and enjoy their guests and things like that. And the bar is almost the kitchen of the basement. So it's where everyone, you know, centers around the bar, just like they would in the main level, of the home center in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's fun to see all the different aspects and things that people put into the bar space, depending on what their hobbies are. Um, I think back to one that we did, uh, gosh, it was several years ago, but it was a custom built wood bar and it was designed after brazen head. Do you remember that project? Mm -hmm. yeah. But it had a really cool top that yes. um, Mike Tenney did by yes, hand. Yes, I do. I remember him actually putting the rough sawn finish because it was a, it was kind of a you know timber rough sawn look. Yeah, very warm and cozy. And uh, Mike actually took timbers and put that rough sawn effect on the timbers and assembled a great big giant bar. It was really cool. Yeah. So Gary, when people are thinking about putting a bar in their basement and you know, there's a wet bar and a dry bar, and obviously the main difference is one gets water and one doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, so having a sink there, having, you know, we've put in a lot of wine refrigerator, or drink cooling refrigerators, things like that. Um, sometimes a dishwasher, sometimes not. These are kind of all the decisions that people have to make with their bar. Mm -hmm. what, what would you say is the biggest factor and if it should be a dry bar or a wet bar when you're having that conversation with people and making that decision? Yeah, uh, obviously how you're gonna use the space, but I think a wet bar almost always makes sense. Maybe sometimes it's a little more challenging for plumbing issues. Uh, a lot of basements in the newer homes, there's some rough plumbing in the floors at different places just in case people add a bath or a bar later. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes those are in the right space and sometimes they're in the wrong <laughs> place and have to be moved. So it's, it's possible to do almost anything in remodeling. It's not always feasible. But I would say for a wet bar, uh, it's really not super expensive or prohibitive to sometimes what to saw a trench Mm -hmm. from existing plumbing over to the new location. So there's great concrete companies, uh, Ohio Concrete, I think is who we use. They have these big cutting machines with dust collection systems, and they can cut uh, a trench for us, and then we'll knock that concrete out, we'll dig down, run our plumbing there, and then pour concrete over that trench. So when we're done, nobody would ever know. But okay. it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's some expense and it's mm -hmm. some time. Uh, the mess is not as bad as you would imagine. If you've ever seen somebody outside sawing concrete, there's just a cloud of dust that looks like it's going clear down the whole neighborhood. Yeah. And uh, I, for one, would not want to be breathing that stuff. But <clears throat> the dust collection systems are pretty good with that. So we do that often. Um, now, there are cases in older homes where maybe you have no drains going out of the basement at all. Uh, but that's not a deal breaker because there's great pump systems that you can actually have a, a, a lavatory or a sink in a wet bar and you've got the, the drainage of the water and it's actually pumped up into your uh, uh, plumbing system, your drainage system. So that's not as hard as some people may think it is. Okay. So there's almost always a way to get water in the basement. It adds some expense, but I think if you think about how you're going to be using that space today, next year, five years from now, 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. I think a wet bar is, is always a good way to at least put some real serious thought into it. Yeah, because even, I mean, even if you wanted to put a refrigerator that had um, filtered water in it, you would need to have that water line, correct? Uh, or is yeah, that a well, different... you need to, a water line to feed it. That's real simple because that's okay. just a quarter inch line that can tie into any plumbing. Okay, in the so basement. that's even easier. And it doesn't need a drain, so that would be a piece of cake. Okay, yeah. well, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. All right, so would you say complexity wise is adding a you know sink and plumbing to the basement bar equivalent to or less than uh, getting the plumbing situated for a bathroom? Um, it would be a little less involved in the bathroom because in the bathroom you're going to typically have at least two or maybe three fixtures. Okay. So you've got a little more drain system 
uh, plumbing. But what that means, it, well, you'd still have just the single trench for your drains. Mm -hmm. So maybe you'd have a three inch drain under your floor. So that would feed all three fixtures in a bath if you have a, a shower, a lavatory, and a toilet. Mm -hmm. uh, again, even if you can put a toilet in a basement floor where there's no existing drains, and that can be pumped up as well. So you're really not limited too much by where your drain's located. It's just a matter of getting the plumbing in there. Okay. Is it helpful to plan out your bar area near the, the bathroom? That's a great question, Jamie, because in design, we're always, it's like uh, looking at all the pieces of the puzzle and trying to come up with the most efficient result as possible. So efficiency lies in using structures, walls, plumbing, any mechanicals that are already in place. Mm -hmm. And if we can use them there, by all means, we definitely try. Sometimes it doesn't really make sense. And sometimes we will show a client two different options. One, here's what you get if we try to use everything where it's at now. But if you do this, look at the change in the floor plan and look at the difference and you decide whether it's worth the money. So sometimes there's an exponential benefit to relocating something just for traffic flow, convenience, um, just aesthetics. There's a lot of reasons why it may make sense to move plumbing, but yeah. that's decision that, you know, our clients, they're the ones that own the home. We just have to give them the ideas to work with. Yeah. Okay. So I've always had wondered <coughs> this with, in our basement where our sump pump is, is in a really annoying spot. Yeah. <laughs> it's like in the worst corner it could be in mm -hmm. um, for how we've always thought we would finish the basement. How close in can you, can you close in a sump pump or does it need space around it or accessibility or kind of what are the rules surrounding a, a sump pump? Yeah, that's a good uh, question. Now, you can't really move a sump pump. It's kind of like relocating your heart. There's so many, you know, your whole, <laughs> all of your tile system is, is working to drain to that sump pump. Yeah. So to move it, it would be pretty much not feasible. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> You can get up close to it. You just have to have room to, to service the pump or change the pump, and that does not take very much room. So okay. you, a lot of times we'll build just a little corner closet mm -hmm. where the sump pump is, and you can go ahead and continue developing your floor plan around that. Okay. Yeah. So you could, I mean, within a couple feet of the sump pump, you could oh, put sure. a wall. Oh, sure. Yeah, know. you can create, you could literally create like a 30-inch by 30-inch little closet. Oh, right okay. around the sump pump. Yeah, I just yeah. need to be able to get back there, mm -hmm. make sure it's running, <clears throat> yeah. things like that. Yep, and to change the pump if it ever needs changed. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, with the with the basement bar and the wet bar and things like that, do we? would you typically suggest a dishwasher as well? Um, yeah, I mean, why not? A dishwasher is really easy to plumb. You just need uh, – the drain is going to typically go – down under the cabinets and into the sink drain. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you need a separate drain hookup for your dishwasher. It just drains into your sink, whether if you have a disposer in your sink or whatever. And the water line feeding it is very simple. That also comes from the sink area. Yeah. So in terms of plumbing, you need a separate electric circuit to uh, feed the dishwasher. Uh, on its own circuit and then the plumbing it's really not a big deal and dishwashers are not that expensive so if you have the room i'd say definitely it's worth it okay yeah sounds like a nice bar yeah okay <laughs> what else what else should we put in our bar well you know you talked about countertops and yeah. that's such uh it's a can be a real focal point and there's been some phenomenal countertops that we put in bars it's a place like you said jamie you can do something fun and something yeah. flashy and uh, maybe, you know, there's there's products that we've done that are really intriguing and add a lot. So maybe uh, beginning the next segment, we'll talk about those. We'll be right back. And the Dave Fox Home Remodeling Show is back. And here we are, Jamie and Gary from Dave Fox Design Builder Modelers. And I'm the president of the company. And Jamie, you are the marketing director. That's right. And uh, you are responsible for the Dave Fox name in the city of Columbus and all over the world. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> okay. I, can't, I don't remember getting any calls from Japan or Singapore lately. You better check on those uh, those outlets, Jane. I know. It's funny. We, you know, our, our production team goes through a lot of our logoed apparel mm -hmm. that we use. We yeah. give all of our guys out in the field clothing that's logoed. So when they walk into a home, the homeowner knows that they're with the team and things like that. Mm -hmm. And when they 
you know, distress it too much, there's too much paint on it, or they get a hole in it or things like that, they need it replaced. And we have them give us back all the clothes because we don't want them being donated locally. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's funny that you say the world because we actually, what we do is we take all that clothing that is a little too worn for our our field carpenters, but we send it to Haiti um, for anyone that's going on a mission trip. So this way it's still being good good use, but um, also not you know, going around Columbus in, in a not, I don't know, organized fashion. <laughs> yeah. So we've got some Day Fox uh, workers in Haiti then with our logoed shirts. Yes. Yeah. yeah. If there's a Day Fox Haiti version. <laughs> Reminds me of a picture I saw from uh, my, my daughter and son-in-law were in uh, Africa doing some mission work. And they took a picture in Africa. They take a lot of the United States names and put them, you know, on whatever there yeah so there was these uh this line of of they weren't really buildings they were kind of shacks yeah and one of them was home depot (laughs) so (laughs) i took that picture to our local home depot here and they got a a kick out of seeing that oh yeah (laughs) Yeah. i know i would love to see um a picture of our our shirts being put to good use there that would be cool yeah but um, I know, unfortunately, it's been a while since anyone's been able to go on a mission trip to mm-hmm. bring them down. So we've got a big, big batch next time someone in our company goes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But. So as we were exiting out of our last segment, uh, say the second segment of our show, we were talking about the countertops in wet bars. Yes. And, you know, we talked a little bit about that rustic one, the wood one. Yeah. Um, but there's so many things that you can do, and there's so many cool different countertops out there that you wouldn't typically use in a kitchen or a bathroom. And one of them is like the lighted one in our showroom. Yeah. The glass top that's mm-hmm. got the LED lighting that changes colors. Yeah, that catches everybody's attention. People yeah. love that bar. So it's kind of a showstopper, you know, it's just something that's a great focal point, a conversation piece. Uh, there's some products. There's a Avonite, which is a it's a composite product that can be glo- uh, have a gloss finish on it. So it's got real exotic textures oh, that's and cool. colors. And yeah. you can polish it up to a high gloss. And you can get away with that down in the basement bar area that's not getting a lot of hard use. Yeah, that would be cool. Of course, there's the, the neat granites, uh, the wood tops. I mean, it's all, you're almost unlimited. There's some amazing wood tops and some exotic woods that just look phenomenal. Yeah. So it, it's an area that you can just really put some pizzazz and some uh, artistic features in and just have a, a great focal point in your wet bar. Yeah. Another thing I've even been seeing, seeing lately in a few basements we've finished up is kind of a ceiling details. So we've done mm-hmm. a couple tin ceiling tiles yeah. and just some different kind of wainscoting and coffered ceilings and things like that where it just brings a little extra focal point and details to the space that really kind of makes it its own that I think is neat. That's so true. Yeah. And along with that goes lighting, which is so critical. Yes. Yeah. Um, lighting is one area that I think we've, in the remodeling industry, we've seen such maturity in lighting, in uh, the technical aspects of lighting and how, you know, it's such a mood thing. Lighting can change the mood of a room three or four different ways. And, uh, you know, there's different times where you may want different lighting, but when lighting is done well and when it's accenting and shading the right areas, uh, the texture becomes so much more dynamic. The colors become so much more important in your layout. Yeah. So it's just amazing what good lighting can do. Yeah, absolutely. And I think too, um, one thing I've been seeing lately is just all the different flooring that goes into a basement that also just make, gives it such a different feel. And we're going to talk about flooring next week so we can go into more detail then. But yeah. I think that, again, I just go back to how much fun people have in their basement and mm-hmm. it's just exciting to see. Um, but yeah, the lighting does, I mean, I can speak to that even just by putting in some cam lights in our semi-finished yeah. <laughs> space. What a difference it mm-hmm. made. It made it also more enjoyable to spend time in, you know, it's not, sure. so we just had the three little light bulbs that were put in there when the house was built and mm-hmm. it's made a huge difference in the enjoyment of the space. Yeah. Okay. So are we moving to wine cellars now? Yeah. Okay. So now we have our bar mm-hmm. and, but for those clients and consumers out there that really like wine, mm-hmm. wine cellars have become very, very popular. Yeah. And, and it's interesting cause we've done, bars and we've done mega wine cellars Mm -hmm. 
And we don't do that much in between. <laughs> yeah. There's, I, I love the look of the wine cellars that are kind of uh, just like part of the wall. You know, the ones that have all mm -hmm. glass in front of them and yeah. they're part of the wall, it almost feels, or almost like a closet size um, that you can see from the outside. Those are really cool. We've did one in Upper Arlington that felt almost like a walk-in closet kind of size, um, but not a big closet. And that was really cool too, but it had really large glass doors so you could kind of see everything um, mm -hmm. as you were walking by. But I really like, that would be, that would be on my list. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm thinking right now, Jamie, we have to get better about getting some images to put, because we are videotaping the show. Yes. And anybody that watches it on video, and we've done this in the past, but um, we need to get a little better about having some pictures of some of these projects that we've done as we talk about them. Yeah. And in case anyone doesn't know, you can go to DaveFoxRadio.com. DaveFoxRadio.com. There you can not only listen to a previously broadcast shows, but also some of them are videotaped and all of those are listed there as well. Yeah, we can start sharing them right over our video here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you can go to YouTube and try to find them, but it's kind of hard because, I don't know, we don't have millions of views, right? So we're not at the top of the algorithm. Yeah, no, just under a billion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's real easy to find them at DaveFoxRadio.com. Yeah, definitely. That's a good idea. Okay. But yeah, so with the wine cellars, I would say some of the, the biggest things to consider um, are definitely the cooling. You know, that's kind of one of the big factors when you think of a wine cellar is, mm -hmm. is cooling the wine. Um, the perfect cellar temperature, they say, is 55 degrees, mm -hmm. um, but they actually target for the humid humidity level to be at 70 degrees. So it's kind of this unique environment that you have to create for the wine, um, and that's why they, they get their own special room. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a big deal to people who really like wine and have expensive wine. Um, there's a lot of different cooling opportunities and of course different size units for different rooms and we've done small ones we've done big ones uh, but in in that space you've got to be able to close the door and seal it off so that you can contain the correct temperature and humidity um, sometimes uh, people on a very small scale will just have a little wine refrigerator right mm -hmm. but on a large scale when you're creating a whole room then you've got a separate HVAC system just for that room yeah yeah and you got to have the space to put the unit as well, because mm -hmm. there's there's the ducted systems, ductless systems, split systems. Can you go into a little bit more detail on those different types of systems? No, I can't. No? <laughs> I don't know that. I don't. In wine cellar uh, cooling, I don't. I'm not that sophisticated. No, I I know the last one we did was in a that I was photographing was in a split system. Mm -hmm. And they were actually fortunate that right where they were putting in the wine cellar, there was kind of a storage room. Yeah. just on the other side of the wall. Okay. And so they they lucked out in a sense, but then going back, or once they were in the middle of construction, kind of navigating all the tubing for that system. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of tubing. I was looking at the kind of progress pictures. We were taking pictures along the way, and yeah. there's a lot of things to work through all the ceiling joists, and a lot of cuts had to be made, and reworking mm -hmm. to get that all flush up into the ceilings. Mm -hmm. um, and things like that. So it was way more involved um, than I would have realized. Yeah. Okay, Jamie, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Dave Fox Home Remodeling Show. And it's Gary and Jamie from Dave Fox, and we're really glad to be here. In case you're just tuning in, we are talking about basements this Sunday morning. And Jamie, and we're seeing a lot of different things done in the basement. It's kind of an extension of your home. Yeah. And a lot of times it's just space down there waiting to be developed into whatever you can imagine. That's right. It's, it's the yep. fun zone. Fun zone could be, you could do anything down there. Absolutely. You can make an archery range down there if you want. Ooh, that'd be a... <laughs> <laughs> How would you like to see Carter and Everly with some bow and arrows down in your basement I, oh shooting arrows? Oh my gosh. Arrows? I, they're terrifying holding a plush animal, so <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> don't All think, right. so I don't think that would be a good idea. Maybe that's not in your future. Then. No, I hope not. Okay. I hope not. <clears throat> but a wine um, cellar, I hope, is in my future. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that would be great, yeah. Uh, but we were talking about wine cellars and the different cooling systems and, and all that goes into them, but they're definitely something that's going to need a professional to help you with the kind of navigating the cooling system and also sealing it properly to put all that money into the room and into the cooling systems and then to have it not be 
completely sealed. I mean, it is a giant refrigerator if you think of it. So you mm-hmm. are basically building a little refrigerator or a big refrigerator yeah. um, in your home. So just making sure that everything is really done correctly and, and taking care of your wine. Because for a lot of the sellers we've done, I'd have to imagine that the wine itself actually costs more than the room. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm, I'm definitely sure. And the rooms <laughs> but, are not inexpensive. <laughs> no, no. Mm-hmm. But wine... Um, Wine can definitely be expensive. I've, I've splurged on one bottle in my life. Yeah. And uh, we, and it was funny. Our splurge, we couldn't quite get the one we really wanted. No. Oh. So we had to get the one that was two years younger, and then wait two years so it would taste like that. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we bought it. We chipped in with our friends. Yeah. I mean, granted, this was like a hundred dollar bottle, so it wasn't that exorbitant. But okay. for us, it was a big deal to spend that much on a liquid. So the four of us went in on it together and let it age for two years. <laughs> and then we marked it on our calendars and we all opened it together. Really? Uh, so it was, that was really fun that for us. That sounds like fun. And, uh, and now we're like, okay, we need to go back to Napa so we can do it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, so it's a, it's a hobby. It's one I share as a hobby and it's very cool and interesting. I've gone out to Napa a couple times in my life and I just love the stories behind all the different sellers. Um, I always stop out at Jacuzzi because mm-hmm. I always think it's funny the correlation, but Jacuzzi, like the tubs, mm-hmm. the same brand also has a, a wine company. Um, and they, it's actually not, ter- not terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's always they, fun going out there. Do they uh, use their bare feet and stomp the, the grapes in the Jacuzzi <laughs> tub? No, oh. they, not, you know, not yet. No? Okay. Hopefully, though. That would be a fun. That'd be a fun. <laughs> I think the, the companies have separated they're no longer one i see but it's that same jacuzzi brand na- yeah. name anyway okay you know when we were talking about the size of wine cellars um how many do you know how many in the large wine cellars that we've done how many bottles they would hold so out of the really big ones that we've done they're usually holding about 500 750 bottles um the one we most recently did i th- was our largest I'm trying to remember how much that one held. I'll have to It was to over look. a thousand if I remember. Yeah, I want to say it was, gosh, like even 1,600. Yeah. I, that one was very, very, that one yeah. held a lot of wine. Yeah. Um, but I would say majority of the other ones are usually kind of that 700 or so range. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we've done some smaller ones that are more that 250, 500 range. Yeah. Um, but it's a, it's a bit of wine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and true wine hobbyists. Uh, really take that seriously and yeah. um, spend a lot of money on the wine and they should have a great place to enjoy it. Yeah. yeah, I know. There's some of my favorite photo shoots to go do, except our first one that we went to go do was, um, I wasn't thinking, it was middle of summer when we went to go do that photo shoot and was not thinking about the fact that it was a wine cellar that we mm-hmm. were going to be in. Our photo shoots oh. can take hours. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was so cold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I totally did not dress appropriately for that that temperature in there, but it was mm-hmm. so cool. Um, yeah. But yeah. So another fun thing that's we've been doing in basements a lot is that home theater. Mm-hmm. And those can be really fun as well. And those are nice because they're fun for the entire family. Yeah. You know, so you can really, it's a space that your youngest kid to the oldest person in the house can enjoy equally. I'll bet during all the virus stuff that the home people that have home theaters have been getting a lot of use since the movie theaters are closed down pretty much. Yeah, I would imagine so. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially, you know, if you get that popcorn machine in there and can get the whole experience going, it's it's definitely something missed. And then you can rent a current movie for $20, right? Yeah, (laughs) there you go. I know it's amazing how, how you can, when you go to the movie theater, the cost, you know, of the extreme cost of the popcorn and everything else to enjoy that film. But then at home, I swear, we'll go to rent a movie and it's like $5. Like, I'm not paying $5. Let's go find a free one on yeah. Netflix. It's yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah, but, but now that the movies are so sp- sparse in theaters. Yeah. You know, I actually paid $20 to watch a current movie and that's just renting it. Yeah, yeah. I would do that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we support the industry, right? Yeah, we did that with them. Um, Trolls World Tour. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when that came out during quarantine, we yeah. We so the home theaters rental. are another place you can do some really interesting things. And one that I'm thinking of, the ceiling was almost like being in a planetarium with yes. all the um, the light uh, transmitting 
cables. I'm trying to think of what they're called. Uh, I don't know. I call them twinkle lights. Twinkle. Okay, we'll call them <laughs> twinkle lights. All right. But yeah, the twinkle light effect in the ceiling that mm-hmm. almost looks like a, like stars mm-hmm. is really yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, of course, seating can be very cool in, in home theaters. Uh, yeah. The big screens. When you think about the technology behind it, that has drastically come down in cost. I remember some of the ones we did a few years ago, just the projector was $30,000. And now you can get a, a nice projector with high resolution for way, way, way under that. Yeah. And I think, too, the other thing that I think is cool that I was kind of looking up on home theaters is, you know, there's very specific dimensions that you're supposed to be away from a screen mm-hmm. and kind of the eye level and, and yeah. things like that when you're wondering, you know, do I have enough space for a home theater or how big does it need to be and things like that. Kind of figuring those dimensions either by the size room that you have that you want to use for a home theater, you can then do kind of a reverse dimension to figure out, okay, this is what size screen I should have. Mm -hmm. Um, Or the opposite, like I want this size screen, then my room needs to be this big if I want to accommodate this much seating and things like that. So kind of thinking through all those um, different, different kind of elements and things and making sure there's no windows and light seeping in mm-hmm. can really create a great experience. Yeah. And our designers are just great at working with people to help them figure out all of those things. I mean, if you're, if any of our listeners are thinking about any of the projects we've talked about today, I mean, that's why we're here. We would be happy to come out and chat with you, talk about your ideas, the feasibility of them, give you budget ranges. Um, so, you know, the first visit, there's no obligation. It's just kind of getting, running th- your ideas through someone that really knows uh, whether it can be done and how much it may cost. And so if anybody out there is thinking about projects like that today, we hope you give us a call, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you can call and you'll talk to Melissa Mm -hmm. and she'll walk you through our process and and be able to give you some some budget ranges and things like that. Um, Although it's funny because basements are a hard thing to give a range on, even just in what we've talked about. There's so many different aspects to a basement and mm-hmm. and what that cost really is. So it's a tough one to give um, give budget ranges on mm-hmm. yeah, without seeing the space. I think we're able to give somebody a general idea because yeah. that's really important. You gotta have some kind of an idea of what you're gonna spend in your basement remodel, right, Jamie? Yeah, yeah, my wine unless, cellar. <laughs> unless budget's no object, we'd be happy to take care uh, of that. You know, <laughs> you tell me, Gary. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I would... Uh, Definitely, if I finished a basement, I would definitely have a a bar and at least a wine area. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would do a whole cellar because I'd have to fill it with something. But but I would definitely want a wine area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would you have in your dream basement? In my dream basement, a music room, a flight sim room, an exercise room. (laughs) You're living living the the dream. dream. That's right. (laughs) Okay, so we appreciate everybody tuning in today. It's the Dave Fox Home Remodeling Show, and we will be back here next Sunday morning at 8.